What's up, y'all? DHR2 Productions back with a brand new video. So, for those of you who are fans of the Streets of Rage franchise, you will know that this article is going to be talking about the history of the franchise. So, what we're going to do is we're going to break down some of the words in this article. And if you're new to my video, if you haven't subscribed, do it right now and click the bell so you'll be notified for some brand new content from yours truly. So, with that being said, let's get into this article right now. Feature the history of Streets of Rage, aka Bear Knuckle 1, 2, 3, and 4. This feature originally graced your screens on the 25th December 2019. We published today to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Streets of Rage. For a lot of us more seasoned gamers, the announcement of Streets of Rage 4 brought a tear to the eye. The original Mega Drive Genesis Streets of Rage trilogy holds a special place in our hearts, and after all this time, the prospect of returning to take on Mr. X's mysterious syndicate with our bare knuckle makes us quite emotional, my apologies. The last entry came out as, oh, Astonishing 25, <laughs> sorry, I can't even get that word right. Astonishing 25 years ago, yet with only three games to its name, plus a handful of ports, the series continues to gain a huge praise and affection. With the arrival of a belated third sequel, it's pretty perfect, well, it's the perfect time to look back over the original trilogy to see just what makes Sega's best, I mean, Sega's belt scrolling brawler so special and find out why we're so excited for this new entry. Hmm. Despite my bad reading stuff, once again, this is really interesting to know that the history of this franchise still holds up today and is everyone's favorite franchise of all time, including mine. Now, I will say this. Blaze is my favorite character, hands down. She has speed, she has better combos, and her fireball does more damage. That's just how I feel. The humble side school and beat him up Junar started life in 1984 with Kung Fu Master, later ported on the NDS as Kung Fu. But it was 1987's arcade hit Double Dragon that ushered its a wave of classic belt scrollers. An NES port arrived the US following year, and the concept caught on with the home console audience. Games like River City Ransom were easy to understand, satisfying to play, and made for excellent two player co op fodder. As anyone who has siblings in the late 80s and early 90s will certainly confirm, the arrival of Capcom's final fight in arcades in 1989 took the Jannard to a whole new level with huge and colorful character, sprites and beautiful backgrounds complementing the pickups and play mechanics. The original Streets of Wage, or Bare Knuckle as is known in Japan, was released in 1981 and was very much a response to Capcom's game. The Nintendo bag exclusively to the console port of Final Fight, which, despite having some considerable downgrades from the arcade's original, most notably lacking two player co op, still looked impressive on Super Nintendo. Sick and borrowed literally from Final Fight. Right down to the roast meat, concealed in trash cans and oil drums, but Streets of Rage somehow created its own identity thanks largely to the sheer style in Exuded. Martial arts, judo, and boxing provided the three playable characters with their own look and fighting style. And while the controls were simple, designer and director. Noriyushi Owa, who had previously worked on Revenge of Shinobi, managed to create an empowering 
move set from just a few buttons, a special move A will call in a in cavalry, I mean in cavalry, in the form of a police car which launched a rocket on the screen from an earlier point in the stage, whipping out all enemies on screens, which is most famous for. Now look, when Final Fight came into the picture in 1989, I think it was a way of, you know, trying to compete with Sega. But, Sega was smart enough to have its own identity, which is why Streets of Rage beat Final Fight on Super Nintendo. It was due to the lack of co-op without Guy, oh, well you have Hackar and you have Cody, but with Guy it was not in it, I think it was the one that threw people off. And if you buy the Japanese version of Final Fight Guy, I think he was the only playable character, or it was, I think it was just him and Hackar. Instead of just having three characters that, that for, you know, the franchise was known for. And it's obvious to me that Sega was the superior over Final Fight. Because I think sometimes when it comes to Super Nintendo, they sometimes struggle with any characters that were from the arcades into the home ports. And I think which case with you know Final Fight on the other hand, even though it looked good on Super Nintendo, but it just come off as like slow, you know what I'm saying? But with Sega, it's much faster and it's much cooler. But Sega, you know, they sometimes struggle with it too when it comes to adding certain ports and adding certain characters that, you know, that does not support, you know, the kind of, you know, characters in the music or don't even support certain arcade sounds. You gotta use what you have. But the cool thing about the first Switch of I mean the first Streets of Rage video game was Yuzo. The guy who was the provider of Revenge of Shinobi and the first two Streets of Rage games. And I tell you, there are a lot of, you know, songs from the Streets of Rage games that I loved as you know, growing up. I wasn't playing the game as, you know, I was you know, when I was a child, I was born in 1981. So I wasn't aware of, you know, Streets of Rage. But by the time I was like four or five or six years old, you know, when I first got my second Genesis as a kid, I fell in love with it. I didn't get the Streets of Rage games, but in 2012, when I first started playing it and done my research on it, I was like, okay, this game seems legit. But after knowing the history of the franchise, I was like, I've grown to fall in love with it. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool. It's very cool. These little touches elevated above the competition. Much more than a mere copy, despite what the box art might have you believe. And expanding upon the foundation of games like Going and Axe, Streets of Rage used a modified version of his engine. I mean, of his engine, excuse me. Using the backdrop of a rundown city that recalled the crime written Detroit of 1987's Robocop. Oh wow. That's, that's my little page of Facebook. Arguably, um, the biggest contributing factor of the game style through was the brilliant soundtrack from Yuzo Kajiro. The composer um, the composure of such classics like At Racer I mean, At Racer and Revenge of Shinobi. His soundtrack fused techno and house with other genres of propel the player from brawl to brawl, using outdated hardware that he that he modified. Kajiro managed to make the Genesis really sing using his Yamaha, uh, the, the Yamaha Studio keyboard player that. People used to use back in the day, and I didn't have the Yamaha piano. But knowing how my family loves music, I wanted to get into the picture. But I could see why this sound was very familiar the way it was played. YM 
2612 sound chip as well as the master systems PSG programmable sound generator. The previous console's sound chip was also presented in the, as I mean also presented in the Mega Drive hardware. He produced a range of trips, realistic uh, realistic percussion samples through the available PCM channel and used a combination of FM synth and PSG for the rest. If heaven forbid you not or fade with the intricate for I mean, intricate of the Mega Drive's audio configuration, we recommend checking out this video, which helped provide a short overview and some isolated examples, including one from this very game. Kajiro's innovative work will go on to predict and even influence club music trends to come shortly after the series ended. Sega didn't tell me what music they wanted, or this, this is what he had to say, Sega didn't tell me what music they wanted or give me any kind of direction. Kajiro told Nick Doyer in an interview of Red Bull's excellent documentary series, Digging in the Carts. I only ever did stuff that I like myself. I told them club music would definitely take off, and I wanted it to be like that. And gave them a demo. Thankfully, Sega liked it and said that liked it what they heard. Well, it could be tough to return to the original game after playing more published, smoother sequel, the music makes it more than worth the effort. And I take them great. Because he was responsible for the first three Streets of Rage games, including Revenge of Shinobi and Act Racer. Now, it's good to know that Sega, you know, loved what they heard, and so they brought it and used it into their game. And it's been history being made ever since. And I think later on, I'm thinking about doing the last play on Streets of Rage, aka Bare Knuckle, on the PS4. Because after reading this, it kind of makes me want to play now. Because I, listen, I haven't played Streets of Rage in a very, very long time. So the fact that I caught on to this article, it really makes me a fan now. Streets of Rage was a brilliant opening salvo then, but it wasn't without issues and feels a little bare bones today. It provided Sega with what it needed, though a hit that emulated and arguably improved on Nintendo's Final Fight port. Master Systems and Game Gear ports were created that captured something of the spirit of the original, though an awful lot was understandably lost in, transla lost in translation on the weaker systems. Sega was eager to build on the success with the speedy sequel, though, and they turned the use of Kishiro's com uh, company, Agent, for help. Wow. So they needed to use the big guns to create a better sequel and a better franchise that can allow them to, you know, step up. By the way, the second um, box art of Streets of Rage 2, the American version, was god awful. Streets of Rage 2, or in the US, or for some reason, launched in the United States on December 1992. Europe and Japan had to wait until January and expanded on the blueprint of the original in every way imaginable. Development was led by Agent, the company co founded by Yusho Kajiro with his younger sister, Ennio, and their mother, Ennio Kishiro, led the planning and art design of the sequel. I have no idea they actually were involved in the sequel. Which is why the graphics and the character design look way different with the larger sprite. I'd probably say Chief Graphic Designer. She explained in the interview with the company's blog, a brilliantly translated by can't even say that word. Nowadays, we call it something like art direction. Designing to overall 
look up the game. And you know, sometimes these video game companies final say can somehow be a bit bad or a bit worse. However you decide, I mean, it's up to them because it's their baby, it's their franchise, they're the one created it, and it's been born. So, I can see why from their design standpoint it looks really different from the original version. As popular as Final Fight and the like were at the time, one-on-one fighters were uprising belt scrollers in the arcades and the biggest hit of the period was a big influence on Sega's sequel. I'm sure you played Street Fighter 2, my brother and I did too. I think, I think these are his words once again. We liked it so much we brought a cabinet and had it installed. I mean, it had it installed in the office at Ancient. My brother and I liked the way they fought in the Street Fighter 2. And between the two of us, we share versions of the fighting of Street of Rage 2. Two arrows, two jabs, following by a straight punch. There's some heavy hits, and the enemy goes flying that kind of flow wait so the sequel was inspired by Street Fighter 2 because of its hit detection and for that that sounds awesome so now we know what the history of these two would have was how it was made Asian looked to expand upon and improve the original in every way the company had experience developing for a spectrum of consoles of the period. Although Aino preferred the Mega Drive over the Super Famicom, the pixels were too big and I didn't like how the coloring, well I didn't like the coloring as much. I liked the Mega Drive more, it just felt cooler. On the Super Famicom, things felt sluggish. Programmers had told me there's not really that much of a speed difference between the two systems, but it just felt faster to me, almost lighter. So the mother agreed that that the main drive is more faster and smoother because if they put it on the Super Nintendo, it'll be a lot slower and about sluggish. And I kind of agree with her even more. Character sprites were made larger in the sequel and all enemies' characters. However, accidental game like uh, grudges and names, even popular elements from the first game got mixed up or simply ejected. The memorable police backup, for example, we had to take that outside. I mean, I mean we had to take that out since we were using uh, diagnosed scrolling now. Kujiro explained in exchange we gave a dedicated button for the character's special attacks. And I think being able to strategize and decide how to use the special is more fun. These special attacks would delay some I mean would deplay some of your health, but could be viable in a tight spot. Double tap a direction and can it be Indicated a more powerful move too. Although without the health plenty, uh, grand uproar. Adam, Adam also fell by the wayside. You had Axel, your standard fighter, then Blaze, the speedy character, but there was also Adam in the first game. But Adam had no real uh, specialty in his place. Two new fighters were added to enable different playstyles. Adam's cave brother Sammy skate in the west, I hated that character, highlighting his rollerblade, and Max, a slow moving but powerful wrestler, that roster seemed like a good balance to us, to a standard role. I mean, two standard styles. And you know what? The way I see it, So, Little Brother Skate and Max Thunder, I wasn't a fan of the two, and I wasn't a fan of, you know, Max, because even though he was slow, he was a very powerful character. As a Skate, I didn't find him that memorable, he was just there. So, 
regardless, Blaze is still my favorite character. That's all I gotta say. If imagination truly is the generous from the flattery, the final fight death team must have felt particularly honored. Elements were unashamedly calibrated from Capcom's Cinema Street Brawler, from movesets and mechanics to locations, enemy types and overall presentation. In spite of us, I mean, in spite of this, Streets of Rage 2 managed to build its own legacy by refining and improving particularly every single aspect of arcade final fight. The sprites were better animated, the controls tighter, the elements, I mean the environments more detailed, and all of this on a home console next to a limited SNES port of Final Fight. There is simply no comparison. Yu Sukujiro's soundtrack also pushed to involve, to envelop, expanding on the house that techno foundation of the original and Fusing infections, infections, melodies, with an ever expanded listing of generic influences, from funk to Albanian jazz to hip hop, all uncovered by a driving beat that seemed to reflect and enhance the gameplay in a very pointed way. This soundtrack, oh, a process. First, okay, I can't, I can't pronounce these words, so I'm gonna skip that word. Uh, something to the electronica of the PlayStation genre is still held as some of the best video game music ever created. Now I tend to agree. Streets of Rage 2 was a massive hit. The console wars were raging, and in the context of the schoolyard, it was up there with the sheer speed and fluidity and fluidity of the Sonic games and an uncensored version of Mortal Kombat as one of the biggest and final features in Genesis Co-op and Genesis Cool Cap. Sega fanboys will arguably never have better ammunition to prove that Sega truly did what Nintendo didn't. Truly did what Nintendo don't. Okay, there's so many mixed issues I have with the article. Certain words I can't pronounce and certain grammars that got me messed up. But you know what? At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? The sequel over the original is by far the best. Unfortunately, it was around this time that Sega would lose focus and began a damage cycle of a company and fighting management and self-sabotage that ultimately led to its demise as a platform holder. It folded the market with expensive, disappointing hardware such as the Mega CD and 32X. It sprung the release of Sega Center on unprepared retailers, I mean retailers, and software developers, and it quickly began hemorrhaging the hard, the hard-earned goodwill it had baked with Genesis, other expensive devices in this. I can't even understand these words. Other expensive devices like the Sega Multi Mega, Multi Mega, Genesis, CDX, and the Sega Nomad further molded the waters of interested Sega fans who were not only running out of money and places to in places to store their black black plastic hardware, but also emanation of the ongoing console war. Streets of Rage 3 launched at the beginning of the end is arguably this context, I mean, this context which led to its diminished status in the trilogy. Many fans of the predecessor similarly never got around to playing it and it became difficult to find in the following years. Original cards still Fetch higher prices once again develop so once again develop in house as Sega with Noyoshi Oba on design duties 
The game features some interesting changes. New dash moves were added for each character. Not just Skate and Max was replaced by Cyborg Dr. Zan, who figured happily in an expanded story. Where's the fans, however, would get a significantly alternate version of the game compared to the original Baron Knuckle 3 in Japan. The biggest change began beginning. Um, the huge change being the huge difficult hike. Hanzutis puts the standard difficulty for the Western release and an exodus, I mean an excess of hard mode on its Japanese counterpart. Hardcore 101 speculates that this may have been to prevent it being completed in a single rental from Blockbuster video. However, the reason for the change, the result feels unbalanced to all but most of hardcore, um, most hardcore players. There were many other changes to the Western version too, but arguably, uh, uh, Determinal and the most part, check out the cutting room floor for a comprehensive list. Okay, some of these words I can't pronounce, man, but I think it's probably because the way I read, it's just the way they pronounce the words. I mean, we're talking about Streets of Rage 3 here. The game that had mixed reviews, yet it had some of the coolest tracks, but not everything was good. The box art was good, the Japanese version, but in terms of the gameplay-wise and the mechanics, it sucked. The music too was experimental. I mean, the music too was experimental. Was more experimental and harder in tone. Motor Hero, uh, Motor Hero Kawashima, had collaborated with Yujo. I'm mean, sorry, had collaborated with Kajiro on the Streets of Rage 2 soundtrack, but took a larger role in the partnership this time around. With Rare Knuckle 3, we got rid of even more of the human elements, he told the Red Bull Music Academy. We were really trying to crank up the meter with what we were making for that game. I think that's what Kishiro Sen had in mind. We wanted, no, he wanted us to give 3 a more uh, descendant feel, I think. It was a certainly a step away from the beat heavy but melodious track of the previous game and it didn't strike a chord with such a poor audience. It's kind of crazy, right? This is what he had to say. It's like the kind of soundtrack tracking that lead you wondering where the melody is. It took a bad beating from listeners at the time, Kajiro, I mean, Yujiro recalls. I remember hearing people saying that it wasn't even music, it was really experimental. And I made it believe that kind of an era was on the horizon. In more ways than one, Streets of Rage 3 turned everything up to 11. It features a playable boxing kangaroo, and for some fans, it was overwhelming. For anyone who never experienced it though, the second sequel is relatively, um, is revelation in its original Japanese uses something. I don't know what it says. A wonderful expansion on the previous game that absolutely worked tracking down to play with a friend. It's a shame that M2, the veteran port wizard, Overseeing emulation on the upcoming Mega Drive Mini, couldn't squeeze it into that console. I mean, that console's roster for 42 games, but its conclusion on the second Mega Drive Classics makes it easy enough to find. And if you want to fast forward, feature that collection takes the edge of Western versions of brutal difficulty too. Now look. Honestly, I just feel like Streets of Rage 3 is one of the weakest one on the roster. Because let's face it, 
the first two games were a lot better than the the third one because the difficulty sucked and the AI was atrocious and yet it had some of the cooler tracks that I like especially the uh, the samurai level but other than that man you know Streets of Rage 3 it's not that good so the series lay doormat for a long time despite attempts of reviving it Core Design's 1987 PlayStation game Fighting Force began life as a pitch for a Saturn installment of Streets of Rage, which Sega turned down. In 1989, Yuzo Kajiro was involved in primarily planning and, pro and, and prototyping for a Dreamcast sequel, which was ultimately shelved. Much later, Revan Games put together a prototype 3D stage that failed to attract the right people's attention as the backbone entertainment's effort. The original games have appeared on multiple uh, compilations and platforms and intervened years for Streets of Age 4 was nowhere to be seen. The news in 2018 that Adult Mode uh, Lizard Cube and Guard Crush games were reviving the franchise, creating a huge excitement in Adam and anticipation, but also a certain amount of trepidation. Dumu and Do uh, uh, Dope Mew and Lizard Cube provided with Wonder Boy, the dragon's trap that they got to corpse of uh, retro titles and were big fans of the hand down with the hand drawn animation art style which works very well with the frame based uh, position while also catching the eye of a broader audience who may not get pixel art with something like Cuphead to be so incredibly success with the pixel art graphics this is where you know 2018 saw you know the news that the Streets of Rage 4 is coming out. So two years ago, the game came out and it was a massive hit. And one of these days, I'm gonna get my hands on that game so that I can do my gameplay on it, just to test it out. You know, see how it goes, whether I like it or not. Because you know, I love me some size scrolling beat 'em ups. Speaking back in 2015, Anyo Kajiro said she would make a, a hypothetical Streets of Rage 4, something that took advantage of modern hardware and allowed everyone to play together like an online multiplayer thing where you and five of your friends could all swagger down the streets like a game while online co-op of Streets of Rage 4 is restricted to two players up to four players can enjoy local co-op importantly Wonder Boy showed that the developers weren't afraid to mix things up and debated from the original game with this in the presentation despite the underlying structure of that title being a 1.1 recreation of the original as fans the last thing we want is a self I mean it's a slavish updated or remix without or preparing or fresh ideas Sonic Mania is a recent revival that got it right Christian Whitehead uh, sort of the IPs uh, uh, Dizzy Factionated old school fans play um, old school fans players who had been dreaming of that return of a classic Sonic for two and a half decades by absolutely nailing the physics in the field but also introducing new ideas in the same sprite I mean, in the same spirit as the originals. Streets of Rage 4 doesn't need to double as an apology, but it does need to show a younger audience why all of us dinosaurs are so passionate about an old series of 2D belt scrollers. Sherry Hunter, the daughter of Adam, the daughter of Anna from the original game, joins her father along with Boy Floyd. Hold on, along with uh, along with new boy Floyd, and bringing something fresh to the to the fray. Sorry for my bad readings. Evolution is a key feature of Streets of Rage, with every entry, boundaries, and 
new and interesting ways. That's what we really looking forward to in the Streets Rage 4. Well, that was half of it. New tracks from Yuzuka Zero were off the 50% at least. We had to pin down the enduring appeal of Streets of Rage to just one thing. It would be that a fusion of mechanics and music that the music that propels you all the work to the next bra. The politic blend of gameplay and audio that size the player into a groove. In the course of writing this piece, we'd be listening, we'd be listening to the soundtrack, and my word does it hold up. Kijuro and Motorio were joined by opposers of video game music legends for the latest entry. In addition to French composer Oliver, I can't pronounce his last name, who did much of heavy lifting audio wise. So once again, the developers freshening the formula. Okay, these are some tough words to read. I'm trying to get there as much as I can, y'all, because you know I'm trying. <laughs> it's not easy, man. I'm not that good of a reader, but I guess I gotta take my time reading, but oh well. For anybody looking to catch up with these modern games on a more modern console, the 3D classic versions of the 3Ds are the work of M2, and they are a great way to revisit the first two games. Um, alternatively, the Ofuma Mission Sega Mega Drive Classics Collection on Switch features the entire trilogy so you can probably get in the mood for number four. And I think it's a cool thing that it's a cool thing that they actually added some classic games up, so which is great. Long video, y'all. I'm so sorry that my ring sucks, but one thing is clear, Streets of Rage 4 had a lot of live up to. Despite uh, talking the talk, there was a legitimate question mark whether Domino, Libicu, um, I can't get the names wrong. Dope Mute, Lizard Cube, and Garda Crush could truly walk the walk and deliver a worthy sequel. As our review confirms, it's a relief to discover that yes, they stuck the landing on this one. They must have been holding up and see it's been a very long wait, but it's finally time to tuck into some beauty, to some beautifully roasted street, oh, full street once again. Okay, this is a tough article to read. Some words I can't say. There are certain names I can't pronounce. Certain grammars that just made me not want to read this article, but I feel like I had to. And like I said, this is a long article, so you might want to, you know, not watch this video because my reading sucks. Please forgive me, y'all. I'm trying my best I can, but now we know what the four games were made and how they were made and what, how they came together. And we finally learn about the, the Streets of Rage knockoffs that were supposed to be be a Streets of Rage sequel but ended up being a, a squashed mess. So yeah. Let me know what y'all thoughts in the comments down below. And if you want the article, it will be in the description below. And I'm gonna have to edit certain things out while I make this, you know while I make this video because this was a long article. I mean a long long article. So yeah. I will see you in my next content and uh, y'all take it easy.